From Detroit to the nations, you are listening to the world's number one Christian station, Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. Pierced in the darkness, darkness, darkness. pulling down strongholds, strongholds. throwing down satanic thrones, thrones. establishing the dominion of God's sovereignty over the earth earth. and the reign of Christ in the hearts of men. This is the word of dominion, dominion. Hallelujah. This is Apostle Prophet Lee Williams coming to you again this wonderful morning, this beautiful, beautiful Friday morning with Word of Dominion. I am so glad to be in the presence of God, for I carry the presence with me at all times. He is my God. He is my Lord. He is my very, very life. And I know that for all of you who know the name of Christ, who name the name of Christ, He is your Lord. He is your God. He is your life. He is your being. He is your perfect, perfect peace. Today, as I speak the word of God, I pray that the ears of God's people will be open to hear what the Spirit is saying at this particular time, at this particular season. Let the glory of the Lord be upon the word. Let the breath of God be upon the word. And let the ears of God's people be open to hear what the Spirit is saying today. For God is raising up a people. He has said, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I'm speaking to the church in general, the body of Christ in general, but I'm speaking to prophets in particular. But this is the time for prophets to arise and be heard. In the days to come, I will be telling you about some things that God is about to do with the prophets in this city, in this region, and in this nation. For this is the day of the voice of God. This is the day of the word of dominion. God is about to release dominion in this earth as never before, but it's gonna come through his prophets, his mouthpieces, his people who declare his will in the earth. So get ready, hallelujah. Get ready, praise God. Glory to God. Uh, Today I wanna speak to you about the power of the declared word of God. The declared word of God. In Psalms two, it says, declare the decree, declare the decree. And I'm going to go back and read Psalms 2 to you because I want you to hear something what the Lord is saying. Sometimes we we quote those scriptures, but we need to understand uh, basically what God is saying because sometimes we don't really know what the Spirit of God is saying. We quote scriptures, but we don't really know the essence of it. So I'm going to go back to Psalms 2. And it says here, Why do the nations assemble with commotion, uproar, uproar, and confusion of voices? Notice that word confusion. And why do the people imagine, meditate upon and devise an empty scheme. The kings of the earth take their places. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed one, Jesus. Let us break their bands of restraint asunder and cast their cords of control from us, they say. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord has, has them in derision and in supreme contempt he mocks them. Listen, God is laughing at the enemy. You know, we, we heard about that Baphomet uh, uh, and several weeks ago and how they, these uh, satanic Worshippers are going across the country uh, to try to uh, erect this uh, this this uh, this idol, but it's really just it's it's a distraction, men and women of God. The Lord said to me on ninth of of of, of uh, 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 the ninth of last month, He said that I will He said I will bring down this idol as I did I will do with him as I did with uh, Dagon of old. I will cut his head off and I'll cut his hands off, and he will bow to the glory of God, which is upon my people, the church. So church. We, it's not a time to get uh, antsy and get afraid. Listen, God wants you to understand that this is nothing surprising to him. God is not in heaven shaking about some, some imp or some, some low creature called 
uh, uh, Baphomet. It's just a, it's an idol. It's people who are deceived and they run around trying to distract people. This we ought to keep our eyes on Christ. The Bible says, if you be risen with Him, then you ought to keep your eyes think on things in heavenly places. We ought to keep our eyes on heaven and listen for the voice of God that's speaking through his prophets today because that is what's going to lead us and that's what's going to guide us and that's what's going to be established in the earth and that's what I'm going to talk about today establishing the word of God it says here he who sits in heaven laughs the Lord has them in derision and in supreme contempt he mocks them he speaks to them in his deep anger and troubles terrifies and confounds them in his displeasure and his fury saying Yet have I anointed, installed, and placed my king firmly on my holy hill of Zion. Jesus Christ is king of the earth. He's king of the, of the body of Christ. He's Lord over everything. The earth and the full thereof belongs to him. And we need to remember that, that Satan is a trespasser. Satan is, 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 a, is, is not one who, who, he has no power. He's, he has no, uh, he lost his power, amen? Jesus Christ defeated him 2,000 years on the on the, ago on the cross when he shed his precious blood. He has given to us the authority that belongs to his people. Amen. He's restored it back to us. He says, uh, I will declare the decree of the Lord. I will declare the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son. This day that I declare, I declare I have begotten you. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Then he goes on to say, I will give you the heathen. God is giving to the church the heathen, those who don't believe in God, those who, those who are lost, wandered around as, as sheep without a shepherd. God wants you to understand that, they are, that the fields are ripe. They are ripe for, for, the, for, the, for the coming of the Lord. They're ripe for, for harvest. God wants us to understand that we, we are to declare the decree of the Lord. Amen? Now, let me tell you what a, de what a decree is. Prophets of God. Uh, a decree is an official order decision or judgment from on high it is an official order coming from a king or from a ruler it is a decision or a judgment from on high declare it means to show or reveal to emphatically announce openly or formally or proclaim the will of god and when we begin to proclaim the will of god what it does it begins to displace satanic powers as i said in the in the, in the introduction here my introduction says displacing uh, demonic thrones. God is tearing down the thrones that Satan has set up in cities, that he has set up in people's hearts and minds, mainly in people's hearts and minds. And God is pulling down those strongholds in the minds of people. Amen? He, and he's tearing down thrones, uh, 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 false thrones that the enemy has set up. Amen? And so uh, God, what God is speaking now to me and to other prophets, we ought to declare what God is saying. We ought to speak the will of, of, of the Almighty God. Now I'm going to go back to uh, I'm going to go to uh, uh, Jeremiah 1 and 12 says, he says to Jeremiah, he says, be not afraid. He says, speak my word. What do you see, Jeremiah? And he told him what he sees. Now, I want to say this before I go any further. There are three things that are peculiar to a prophet. Number one, he hears. Number two, he sees. And number three, he speaks or prophesies the word of God. That is a peculiarity of a prophet. He hears, he or she sees, and they speak and prophesy the word of God. Now, Amos 3 and 6 through 8 says, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be, shall there be evil in the city, and the Lord has not allowed it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing in the earth, but he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. God will do nothing in the earth until he first reveals it, his secrets to his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? But the Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? As a prophet of God, I have to speak and declare what God has put in my spirit. It's like fire shut up in my bones. I can't do nothing but speak what God has said. Now, listen to me, sis. As a prophet, I want to say this. I must continue to impregnate the atmosphere surrounding this region, Detroit, and the nation with the word of God until it is heard, received by all, 
and is made manifest. In Habakkuk, it tells us to write the vision, publish the vision, proclaim the vision, and make it plain, that they who hear it may run with it, that they may run with it. God is going to impregnate the air as I speak the word of God, as other prophets speak and declare the word of God, it's going to impregnate the atmosphere. And that word will rest in the atmosphere until someone picks it up, just like a radio station or just like a radio signal or a tele or TV signal or, 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 or signal that comes over the Internet. That signal is in the air, but there has to be an antenna or something, a reception, a receiver to pick it up. So that's why I pray that the, the voice, the ears of God's people will be open to hear what the Lord is saying. And God is releasing his word into the earth and, and, and it's, going to, it's impregnating the air. And it's surrounding people. It's, it's, it's going into people's homes. Not just, in, not just on the radio, not just on TV, but I'm talking about in the air where people will begin to hear the sound of God. They begin to hear the sound of, of, of his will and of his purpose. His voice will be spoken. And, and I'm telling you, and people will pick, well, that's how inventions are made. That's how people pick up creative ideas. It's in the atmosphere. It's in the air. Praise God. It has been spoken and declared by God before the foundation of the world. And now there's a release. There's a time and a release upon the word of God that God will begin to move and change things and, 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 and create things to, to happen according to his will and according to his purpose. Amen. There's a shaking going on in the earth. God is shaking. God is transitioning. And God, is, what is God doing? He's, he's, he's shaking his people, shaking everything out of his people that should be shaken out so that that which should remain should remain. And so the word of God comes to shake. It comes to uproot. It comes to tear down. And so why is, what is God doing? He's preparing you, preparing the people uh, to accommodate his perfect will. That's what he's doing. So he, he has to tear down first, and then he begins to up, uproot, and then he begins to establish, amen, his will and his purpose in the hearts of God's people because Jesus Christ wants to reign in the hearts of his people. Amen. And so that's what I'm doing. Now, Jeremiah 1 and 12 says, uh, the Lord says, uh, he told Jeremiah, what do you see? He said, I see a plum. I see a, I, I see a tree. And he, he went on to say, what do you see? He kept he declaring what he sees. He says, he says, Jeremiah, you see well. He said, I am alert and active. Watching over my word to perform it. I'll read it to you again. I am alert and active. Watching over my word to perform it. So God is waiting for us to decree a thing, declare a thing, and he's going to do it. In, in Job 22 and verse 28, it says, You shall also declare or uh, decide and decree a thing, and it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. Favor. God's word brings favor for those who hear it and obey. Favor, God, is, that's, that's grace, grace. God is releasing grace upon the earth through the prophetic voice of his prophets. He said, you shall, it, my, the, the light of, of God's favor shall come upon you, shall shine upon you. When you make, when they make you low or try to bring you down, you will say there is a lifting up. You will say that. Lift, be lifted up, men and women of God. Be lifted up. He says, uh, uh, when they make you low, you will say there is a lifting up. And the humble person, he lifts up and saves. He will even deliver the one for whom you intercede. Prophets must be intercessors. Prophets of God, you are watching on the wall. There are intercessors that are not necessarily prophets, but a prophet cannot be a prophet unless he's an intercessor. So prophets must intercede, amen? So he says he will even deliver the one for whom you intercede who, in your, who, in, who is not innocent, yes, he will be delivered through the cleanness of your hands, through your righteousness. And we are the righteousness, righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so what we decree and we declare in obedience to his voice, God will establish it. Amen? Hallelujah. That's, that's good news. That's glorious to me that God has given us the privilege and the honor to first of all fill us with his anointed, fill us with his spirit, and then give us the honor to speak his word, and then he perform his word. Listen, saints of God, church of God, we need to understand that we are the authority in the earth. We are the, we are the ones who are to bring dominion upon this earth, the dominion of Christ. We are to establish the king. We are to prepare a place for his coming. Amen. He wants to, he wants to come upon this city he wants, of Detroit. He wants to come upon the nation and the world. He wants to pitch his tent. Amen. And abide with us. Praise God. That's what God is looking to do. Praise God. But he must have voices in the earth. And so I am here as a voice of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to go back to um, Isaiah, the uh, 60th chapter. I'm going to read it to you from the uh, Amplified. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Not in a hurry. Don't have to be in a hurry. Just speak the word. Isaiah 60. And verse 1 says, Arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new level. Rise to a new life. Shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. And I'm speaking to prophets who have become numb uh, by, 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 by religion, who have become uh, 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 almost dying on the vine because you have been you have been held down and held back. You have not been recognized nor 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 uh, 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 embraced. But I tell you that I'm gonna I'm gonna speak this I'm, and before the end of this broadcast, I'm gonna share with you uh, 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 an alliance, an organization, if you will, that God has given me. Amen. For profits. Amen. And, and God is saying to you, arise. Those, you you have become you you who have become numb, who have become uh, 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 downtrodden by religiosity, who have been not been recognized, who have been uh, even they've tried to desecrate the image of Christ in you. But God says, I'm rising, I'm, I'm arising upon my prophets. He says, arise for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you and nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. He's talking about the body of Christ in general. And he's talking about the prophets in particular. It is time for us to arise. So I speak to every prophet, every potential prophet that doesn't even know that he's a prophet or she's a prophet. Arise and shine for your light has come. Wake up, church. Wake up, body of Christ, because God is, God is shaking. He's shaking the earth. And God said, you are his instrument. You are his threshing tool. You are his hammer. God, we, are the, we, are the, we are the weapons of God. And God is in our mouths, saints of God. And guess what? The, it's, a, it's about the love of God. It's in our hearts for one for another. God is saying it's time for us to stop being divided. Stop uh, trying to have our own little kingdom. Time, it's time to stop trying to promote our own agendas. It's time for us to come together as one people and let the king be king and we be his subjects because God cannot do anything unless we are in one accord and he cannot move unless we obey him. So God is saying, rise up and come together and be one people. Be one voice. As it was in Jericho, they were one voice. They marched around Jericho. They marched around Jericho for seven days. They obeyed God. And on the seventh day, they march around it seven times, and then they begin to shout. One shout, not one person shouting over here, and one person shouting over there. They were on one accord. They were, they were synchronized. Amen. And they spoke, they shouted in obedience to God, and the walls came down. We, the church of the living God, we, the nation of Christ, we, the prophets of the Most High God, we must be on one accord, and we must say the same thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is doing. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, uh, I want to share something with you today, a prophecy that God gave me uh, on December 31st of 2014. He said, this is the time of visitation, which will, be, which will become a habitation. God wants to inhabit us. He wants to not just visit us, but he wants to inhabit us. The Ancient of Days, he said, I, the Ancient of Days, am visiting your homes even the homes of those who are called by my name, those who worship my son, Jesus Christ, who honor him in all they do, I am visiting and bringing you dreams and visions of understanding of what I am doing in the earth. Now listen to me, saints of God. He says, I'm bringing you dreams and visions of understanding of what I am doing in the earth. I am wooing you to come away to my secret place where you will be given the mysteries of my heart. Prophets, I'm talking to you. Prophetesses, I'm talking to you. God is wooing you to come away, come aside. He said, I am drawing you to my internal word as never before. My word will take precedence over all your earthly distractions. Your appetite for my word will become an insatiable. Even those who are listening to me now, God is shifting you right now as you hear my voice. He's shifting you. And there's a shaking going on. There's a quaking going on. Hallelujah. And God, is, God is, is drawing you and he's taking you away from the distractions. Amen. He's causing his word to become a precedence in your life. Your appetite for my word is becoming insatiable, he said. This year and beyond, I am bringing heaven to this earth. 
your circumstances, even into your homes. My glory shall be seen and known throughout this earth. Because of, as I, in Isaiah 61 through 3, my light shall rest upon you and like a magnet, the people dwelling in, dwelling in darkness shall be drawn to your light. They shall say, what must I do to be saved? And my word of salvation shall be in your mouth and signs and wonders shall follow you, said the Lord. Great salvation has now come. Hallelujah. He said, I am rising. I am raising up prophets like Micaiah who will no longer prophesy smooth words, but they will prophesy words that correct and realign my people to walk in holiness and do works of righteousness. They will declare my words on TV, radio, and every avenue of communication. Even in the streets, I am placing judgment in their mouths, and they will visit courthouses, bars, houses of, edu houses of education, and declare my words of judgment and blessing. I will protect these holy ones from the evil besieging that is encroaching upon the land. I will answer yours and establish your declarations and decrees immediately, says the Lord. More signs and wonders in the heavens and upon the earth. Even more angelic appearances. Why am I speaking this? Because I'm impregnating the air with the will of, and the word of God. More signs and wonders in the heavens and upon the earth. Even more angelic appearances. I'm about to manifest my angels as I did with Cornelius in Acts 10. Who whole houses, listen to this, whole houses shall be saved. Little children between four and eight years old shall be miraculously filled with my spirit and begin to utter words of third heaven wisdom that will astound those who hear. Let me tell you something that happened to my, my granddaughter. She was uh, talking to her mom. She was about mm, two and a half, three years old. And she said, mom, she said, I'm, I'm forgetting heaven. I'm forgetting heaven. She says, you know, in heaven, there are creatures there are things in heaven that have eyes all around their heads, eyes in their wings. Listen, this is a three-year-old baby who has not read the Bible. She was speaking and uttering. Hey, she's uttering third heaven wisdom and understand. Do you understand what I'm saying? Saints of God, it's time for us to start looking for the supernatural. It's time for us to start believing in a supernatural God. Who, who is far ahead of Satan. We are, it's time for us to look away from this mundane, the mundane things of the earth and begin to realize that heaven is just across the street. Heaven is just across the street. We are a part of heaven, saints of God, and there are those in heaven who are cheering us on. The angels are cheering us on. They're saying, come on, body. Come on, church. Rise up. Rise up. Come on. There's a moving of the spirit. I was riding down. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm excited. I'm gonna, I was riding down the street the other day. I'm going to share this thing with you. I was riding down the street the other day, riding down the expressway, and I saw the wind, the cool winds coming, and I saw the leaves begin to, to change. Uh, you see the white side of the, the other side, of, not the dark green, but the light green of the, of, the, of the leaves begin to just shift from the wind. And the Lord said, son, son, do you see? Do you sense the change? Do you see it? Do you hear the change coming? It's upon you. It's upon the earth. He, I said, yes, Lord, I see it. He said, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Let me tell you, saints of God, September and October is going to bring about a tremendous change across the earth because, and I'm going to share more with, more, more with you about that, about the Jewish calendar and what uh, uh, this, these, uh, uh, September and October is going, to, is going to bring. But we must understand that there's a shifting and there's a moving of the Spirit of God, and we must be aware of it. We must be uh, uh, attuned into what God is doing. But let me go back. Again, and, 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 and say what I was saying, I, got, I just had to share that with you. He said, little children, he said, I'm going to save whole houses. Little children between four and eight years old shall be miraculously, miraculously filled with my spirit and begin to utter words of third heaven wisdom that will astound those who hear. Great salvations would take place in the most unexpected places. Did I not say in Malachi 4 and 5 that I would send the spirit of Elisha? It came upon John the Baptist, and he was filled with my spirit in the womb. Is anything too hard for me, the God of all flesh? Nay, for I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. What, did I, what I did in the past, I will multiply a thousandfold today. Will you dare to believe, my people? Will you dare to believe? Will you begin to prophesy and declare what you have read and heard in this prophecy? Listen and hear wisdom. The enemy has tried to desensitize this generation as to who I am, and he's attempted to desecrate the image of Jesus Christ. But I, the great I am, the Ancient of Days, will resurrect them and establish my image in them. I, the Ancient of Days, will resurrect them and establish my image in them. He's talking about the sagers. He's talking about the prostitutes. He's talking about the pimps. He's talking about those who people are, have thumbs down on, those who nobody cares about. He say those who think uh, that who 
those who people think that if God has thrown away, God is going to surprise us because he is all, he said, did he not say I came to preach the gospel to the poor, to those who don't know me? Hallelujah. He came to preach the gospel to the poor. He said, therefore, I say to you, behold, a great army is rising up, an army of warriors of every race and color, young prophets and evangelists, evangelists who, have, who have heads like flint, who will love not their lives to the death. They will know their God and do exploits tirelessly and fearlessly. Let me read that again. He says, Behold, a great army is rising up, an army of warriors of every race and color, young prophets and evangelists who have, who have heads like flint, flint, who will love not their lives to the death. They will know their God and do exploits tirelessly and fearlessly. Praise God. Lord, I, I, I rejoice over what you're about to do. He said, I will cause their ears to be sensitive to my words. Listen to this. He's talking about the saggers, the, 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 those who don't, those who people have, 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 have written off, the rappers, all those who people have written off. God is not mad at them because it's not their fault. It's the past generation. It's the past church who has not uh, done their job. And God has said, now nah, I'm running to prophecy to rise up and begin to declare my word. Listen to this. He said, I will cause their ears to be sensitive to my words of life. There will be no need for long, drawn-out, empty sermons. Just key prophetic words filled with my breath that will catch their ears and touch their hearts, and they will come to me. Listen to this, saints of God. Day before yesterday, I was sitting in a gas station, and a young man got out. Young, nice-looking young man. Built nice, you know, young man. Strong. But he had his pants down below his rump. Down below his butt, just... I mean, his butt was out, okay? He put it another way. And I looked at him and I said, shook my head. I said, Lord, Lord, Lord. That's all. I said, Lord. And in my heart, I said, how can we reach these young men? How can? And I forgot about the prophecy that God gave me. And, I, and I'm just looking at this young man. He goes in the store in the gas station. He comes back out, goes to pump his gas. And all at once, the Spirit of God rose up in me. And I, and I'm, I, I beckoned for him to come to me. He came over to me. I reached my hand out. He took, took my hand, and I held his hand. I said, look me in my eye. It was almost like when Peter told the man at the gate, beautiful, look upon us. I said, look in my eyes, and I locked my eyes to his eyes. And I began to prophesy to this young man. I said, you are, do you know that you are a warrior? I said, this is coming from the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a warrior. You are a prophet of God. God had declared your life, your destiny, before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. You are a warrior, I kept saying, I said, and, and, and in the next three months, God is going to begin to, your life is going to change, uh, uh, be shifted and changed uh, to never to be the same again. And God's going to begin to give you dreams and visions, son, dreams and visions. Almost every night, you're going to have dreams and vision. For the next three months, God's going to begin to shift and change and turn your whole life all the way around. I said, do you hear me? He said, he nodded, yes, sir. I said, you are a prophet of God. You are a warrior of God. Do you hear me? I said, God is about to change your life. You are a man of God. And he, he said, thank you. Thank you. He walked away. And as he walked away, he pulled his pants up. <laughs> I mean, he just, it's, it, he just pulled his pants up. Now, he wasn't thinking about pulling his pants up. He pulled his pants up. You know why? Because I spoke to his potential. I spoke to who he is. I declared who he is. They need to know who they are. Amen? Because the devil has told them that they're nothing. The devil has told them that they are, that they, that they are zero. Amen? And, and they're listening to pied pipers of, of bad news. They're listening to pied pipers of, 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 of uh, peer pressure. Those who don't know where they're going. They're walking around in circles. They listen to these rap songs that are, that are talking about kill, kill, kill. And, and that you're, you're, you're this and you're that. And, and, and hate and all that. And God is saying, no, I want my prophets to rise up now and begin to declare to these young men and women who they really are. And that's what happened to that young man that day. And let me tell you, I'm a prophet of God, and I do this all the time. I speak potential. Prophets of God, you are not here to bring doomsday upon these people. Oh, sure, we're going to declare the judgment of God upon earth. Yes, we will. We're going to declare judgment, but we're also going to declare the, 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 the goodness of God. We're going to declare people's purposes and destinies. That's what God is saying. Prophets arise and begin to speak the word of God. That young man will never be the same because what I said to him is going to come to pass. And as he walked away, I saw him pull his pants up. And, and what came to my mind was, 
Warriors don't sag. <laughs> Warriors don't wear their pants down like that. that. And it hit that brother. It hit his spirit, man. Just like God says, he said, there will be no need for long, drawn-out, empty sermon. Just key prophetic words. He said, I made their ears sensitive to my words of life. God has programmed these young men and women before they came into this world to hear his voice, not the voice of the enemy and not the voice of, 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 uh, of uh, mundane, uh, uh, weak. <laughs> I'm trying to find a good word. Unprophetic. It's not, that's not a word. Unprophetic apostolic uh, pe preachers who don't do nothing but preach uh, uh, what used to be. God is not camped out in yesterday. God is moving forward. He's always dynamic. He's always moving forward. And he wants people to speak present day truth. Do you hear me? Present day truth. What is God saying now? Not what he said yesterday. Listen to what God says. He says, I am mending the breach. I am mending the breach between the fathers and the children. For truly Mal Malachi 4, 5, and 6 is in operation. Even now, those these who are, listen to this. For truly Malachi 4, 5, and 6 is in, is in operation now. I'm mending the breach between the fathers and the children. These who are especially designed for this age of confusion, chaos, and tyranny. Listen, he's talking about this generation that you see out there. The saggers, the, 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 the rappers, the, 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 the drug dealers. Uh, the, the, these young people out here, they listen. And even the Middle Ages, though it doesn't matter about age. He said they have been programmed. They are designed for this age of confusion, chaos, and tyranny. They shall converse with the true spiritual fathers who will instruct them in righteousness and how to war the war of love. Oh, that's a word that you need to listen to. There's a, there's a weapon of war, and it's called love. Hallelujah. They will, they, will, they will war the war of love. They will learn to cast not their pearls to swine, for they will hear the wisdom of the fathers. 1 John 2, 12 through 14. He says, I am a holy God, and you, my church, must become holy as I am holy. I will no longer tolerate lust, fornication, and despotism in my leadership. I will no longer tolerate lust, fornication, and despotism in my leadership. I will judge those who tolerate concupiscence in my house in my body you know what concupiscence is it's strong violent lust in the hearts and the minds of people it is strong violent lust I got pastors that come to me that are caught up in pornography and I cast the devil out of them I've got men and women of God who come to me who are, who are locked in and, 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 and addicted to porno, pornography on internet pornography. Listen, saints of God, it's time out for this weak stuff, this weak gospel that you're preaching. Yes, grace, grace, is, grace is not weak. Grace is the favor of God. For did he not, people say, well, it's hyper grace. No, there's no such thing as hyper grace. But let me tell you about, I don't know why I got on grace right quick. Grace is God's favor for, for a lost people. Listen, what does it say? In, 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 in uh, uh, Hebrews 4.16, it says, Therefore, come boldly to the throne of, what? Grace. To the throne of favor. That you may receive, what? Mercy and favor and help in your time of need. There's no such thing as hyper grace, saints of God. God favors us. Jesus Christ has given us what we don't deserve. Mercy, mercy denies us what we deserve, which is, which is hell. Amen, which is sickness and disease. Mercy denies you that. Grace gives you what you don't deserve. Amen. Mercy denies you what you do deserve, but grace gives you what you don't deserve, which is God's favor. Amen. Christ's riches, I mean, God's riches at Christ's expense. Listen, God loves you, man, and woman of God. Even you who are grabbing your head right now, shaking your head and, and confused, God loves you. He's pulling you up. Young man, I know you're lost. I know you're angry with your mama. I know you're angry with your daddy because nobody has really shown you the way. I know that you've been called uh, uh, bad names, MF. You've been called words like bastard and, and no good, and you want to be like your daddy. You're going to be like your mama. You've been called all kind of names. You see, you, you have not been raised. You have not been loved. But let me tell you, God is raising up men and women of God. He's raising up fathers in this last day. He's raising up fathers in the church who will love you who will love you. Now, let me tell you, fathers, 
It's not about you come trying to preach some sermon to them. It's the prophetic words that's going to be in your mouth. You're going to speak and declare their potential. You're going to speak to them and God, they're going to hear God's voice. They're not going to hear a voice. They're going to hear God's voice like that young man heard the voice of God the other day. And it, he, he perked up. Whoa. Like, I didn't speak to his situation. I didn't speak to his uh, uh, high wars clothes. I didn't speak to uh, 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 his, 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 his demeanor, his, his, his attitude which is not really, uh, uh, has no latitude. Hear what I'm saying to you. He's at a, his attitude had no latitude. The boy was just, he's the man was just doing what he thought uh, or was apropos for his, for his generation. But let me tell you something. God has called him to rise up out of his generation. God has called him to be a leader. Amen. And that's what God spoke to us, his potential as a leader. Hallelujah. And I love it. I love what God is about to do. I see thousands and thousands of young men and women coming to the Lord with their hands raised up, worshiping the almighty God. Praise God. I see Detroit surrounded with worship and praise. I see, I see uh, 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 the, the minstrels, the, the, the worship leaders and the, and, the, and the praise team all around the city, lifting up their voices and praising God, coming out of obscurity, raising their hands and lifting their voices to God. And God's going to begin to give us a spoil like he did uh, Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles. When they begin to go forth saying, praise Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And God caused the enemy to be confused and, 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 and confounded. And, and they begin to attack one another. Satan is a, is a destructive spirit. He don't even like himself. There's no love in him. He hates himself. And he can do nothing but hate. He can do nothing but project evil. But let me tell you something. God is going to confuse him by your praise, by your worship, men and women of God. It's your praise and worship that's going to confuse Satan. Because you know why? He led the angelic choir. He, 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 he would move. Listen, this thing in Lucifer. What was his name? Lucifer. Amen. Son, what, the, the day star. I mean, he was the morning, the sun of the morning. He was light. He was bright. And every time he moved, sound went forth. He could move his little finger and sound went forth. He, he could turn and like, a, like, a, like, like you play a guitar, like you play a harp. He, when he moved, sound came forth uh, from, his, from, his, from, his, from his body. Amen? His pipes. The Bible talks about his pipes. Amen? But then it says, what was found in him? Iniquity was found in him. He was so beautiful that he said, hmm. Now, I don't, listen, I can't even begin to tell you why iniquity was found in him. He watched God create, create things. He watched God create the earth. He, he saw the power and the glory of God. But he got caught up in himself. How? I don't know. But I pray that we, I've seen it in the church. I've seen men get, get a little bit of power. I've seen it in the earth. I've seen it in, 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 in the political realm. I've seen it in businesses. People get beside themselves and they take on a satanic attitude thinking that they are more than they are. Pastors who get a little bit of a little bit of people coming to them and, and, and honoring them. Uh, they get beside themselves. They begin to, begin to think that they're a king. Amen. Prophets can do the same thing because you're charismatic. People begin to come to you and want you to give them a word. And then you, and then, uh, you get beside yourself. You start giving them words that are coming from God. You give them your word, not God's word. I'm, t I'm, I'm speaking to a spirit, uh, a satanic spirit of pride. A pride. And I'm going to be talking more about that. I'm going to be telling you about how to avoid the pitfalls of pride. Hallelujah. But right now, let me get back to my, I'm, you know, I'm a prophet. Sometimes we look like we're all over the place, but I'm, I, but I'm, but I'm on track. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, he says, they will, well, they will come to the fathers and they will learn the wisdom of, of, of the ages. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want to say this. God is saying, pastors, preachers, teach the truth. Heal my people. Lead them in righteousness and holiness. Hallelujah. And God says, he, he said, and I also said this on that night. He said, I am restoring the sanctity of marriage. Too many divorces. My people, even the so-called leaders, have made a mockery of my ordinance of matrimony. I am not pleased. It has caused violence in my house, my body. The lust, fornication, pornography has made it easy for men, easy for men to discard their gifts, which is their wives, and mislead the young. 
raise up a standard of holiness and consecrated commitment to the vow, capital V-O-W. God does not take the vow. Uh, 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 it's, it's something that he doesn't just wink at. God created the vow. It's a vow between a man and a woman, and it's a vow to God to keep the sanctity of marriage, V-O-W. He said, he said, raise up a standard of holiness and consecrated commitment to the vow. In other words, men and women of God, leaders, leaders, you must be a representative of what marriage really is. You can't go the way of the world. Through the spirit of fornication of this age, lust and evil has abounded. But now I am gracing this generation. Listen, this generation of saggers, uh, of, 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 the, of the church, all across the country, all across the world. Amen? All across the world. He said, I am gracing this generation with a sense of holiness that will strengthen them and they shall become the new leaders of their generation by their holy lifestyle. Even those who are in prison, in literal prisons, God even now is giving them dreams and visions. He's pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. Amen. He's raising up a standard even in the Muslim community. They're getting dreams and visions. They're starting to see the Christ. They're getting saved because they see the Christ. Listen, God is doing a phenomenal thing. Amen. He said, um, uh, I'm raising up uh, new leaders of this generation. By the, they will know them by their holy lifestyle. As a result, the Pied Pipers... Let me go back and read that again. I am gracing this generation with a sense of holiness that will strengthen them. He said a sense of holiness that will strengthen them and they shall become the new leaders of their generation by their holy lifestyles. Holy. As a result, the Pied Pipers of witchery, fornication... Adultery, like guys like Jay-Z. Hey, listen, they are Pied Pipers of witchery. Did you hear that? Fornication and adultery. Beyonce. They are Pied Pipers of, of, of wickedness. Amen, he said. Witchery, fornication, adultery, and debauchery, and even pastors are doing the same, some pastors, shall be overshadowed. They shall be overshadowed and dry up like cinders of coal. Oh, my God, let me read that again. As a result of these, this new generation of, of, of holy young men and women, he said, the, the, the pie pipers of witchery, fornication, adultery, and debauchery shall be overshadowed and dry up like cinders of coal. But even in my mercy, I will, I will see to it that even a remnant from among them shall reap an inheritance among the saints. So there are some of those who have fallen away, who have been misled, and they're, they're teaching and and pro projecting evil and wicked ways of living. And God's even amongst them, I'm going to save some of them. There's a remnant even among them. Even amongst the Jay-Zs and even amongst those who are out there who are, who are, who are, who are doing evil and wicked things. Uh, 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 you know, like uh, Lil Wayne and things like that. I, I, I pray for Lil Wayne. I pray that God will save him. I pray for those who have become bound up in homosexuality, uh, who, who, who don't know any other lifestyle. I pray for those who are in the gangs who, are, who, who don't know any other lifestyle. I pray because, and I'm speaking and declaring things into the spirit realm, and I will be declaring things over these, over these, over these airwaves. Amen. That's going to begin to touch them, even in, their, even in their, in their, in their, in their, in their, uh, uh, in their bedroom. Hallelujah. He said, uh, but even in my mercy, I will see to it that even a remnant from among them, the, 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 those who are, uh, uh, who are walking in wickedness, shall reap an inheritance among the saints. This happens because of the great light resting upon the young warriors and priests. Now God is saying to you, men and women of God, can you, the prophetic heralders of my truth, believe enough to declare these things in the earth? Nevertheless, it has been spoken, and I will not relent, said the Lord Sabaoth. How much time do I have? Five minutes. I want to say something. I want to, I want to speak something that's going to be happening. I have something called I'm the founder and the apostle of an alliance called Detroit International Prophetic Alliance. It is an alliance of prophets, intercessors, prophetic pastors, and prophetic churches. It is an alliance that, will, that connects, uh, because there's a disconnect in the body of Christ, especially amongst the prophets. There's a disconnect between pastors and prophets. And God wants to connect. And there's a disconnect in the stream of the prophetic. 
They are, they are, dis, are disconnecting the moves. We are, it's, it's disconnecting. God is wanting to bring, he's wanting to bring us together. So I'm, I'm letting you know, and I'll be announcing it and I'm, uh, more as, as, as I'm as I, uh, on this broadcast. But DIPA, Detroit International Prophetic Alliance, and Alliance of Prophets, there's going to be a gathering in the, la the last of September or the first of October. And I will, you can go on my website, mercifulministries.org, and get that information. Or you can go on my, on my, um, my, my uh, email, because I'll be putting it out on an email, and my Facebook page, Prophet Lee at yahoo.com prophet lee at yahoo.com and you can go on my facebook lee williams i'm going to be i'm going to be sharing with you what's going to be taking place in september i'm going to be gathering prophets together i'm gathering prof pastors together i have a book that i've written called prophets and pa pastor relationship because prophets and pastors is the most conflicted uh, conflicted relationship in the body of christ at this point is prophets and pastors they don't understand each other they don't understand each other. I've been a prophet. I am a prophet, but I've been a pastor. So I understand both uh, anointings and both offices. I've walked in them. I've walked under pastors. I, I understand. I've been, I've been, uh, I'm going to be sharing some things with you prophets about how, how to handle certain things. Uh, I'm trying to find the words for it. How to walk with your pastor. How to walk with it. And pastors, I'm going to be talking to you about the apostolic because in order for you to uh, walk with a prophet you must become apostolic you cannot go with the old way of doing things you have to become apostolic amen and i'll be explaining it to you what apostolic means amen because there's a leadership going on in the body of christ you cannot operate from the old anymore you must go with the spirit and god those who won't go with the spirit god is putting them on the shelf you don't want to be put on the shelf man of god you may look like you're standing Paul said, be careful how you stand lest you fall. You may look like you're standing, but if you don't hear, hear the voice of the prophet, you hear what I'm saying. It's time to start hearing what the prophets are saying because they are declaring the word of God. There's a shift going on, and you must go with the shift. There's a, the Holy Spirit is moving one way, and he's not moving in the old way. You must go with him. The cloud is moving. You must go with the cloud. Praise God. So that's going to be in September, and I'll be letting you know more about it, uh, uh, prophets, pastors, apostles, because... Uh, uh, it's time for us to come together. Amen. DIP is about training. It's about connectivity, connecting the prophets. It's about accountability. There are too many un uh, prophets that are not accountable. They're like, they're like lone strangers. They're, 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 like, they're out here like loose cannons. And it's the truth. They just, and, and then they go into the church. I got a word for you. They don't, and they're not under any, any authority. I heard a pastor say this. He said, you can't lead me unless, unless, I find, unless I find out who's leading you. You can't lead me unless you be led. Amen. You can't. You, you can't uh, 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 tell me something if, if uh, how do you see? He said, You can't lead me unless you're being led, amen. And you can't, uh, uh, I can't, I can't remember, it's not coming to my right now, but it was such a beautiful thing that he said. So don't go into church talking about, oh, he said, You cannot, uh, unless, you cannot lead me unless I know that you're under somebody. I'm not quoting right, but you have to come under authority, prophets of God. A lot of hurting prophets. A lot of prophets have been hurt, bruised, uh, uh, misused. Uh, uh, you've been, you've been, you've been ridiculed. You've been put down. You've been squashed. Amen. And and you're angry. But I'm telling you, uh, Dipper is a refuge. It's a healing place for you where you can come together with other prophets and you can be healed and you can you can be embraced and you can be uh, 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 trained and equipped. Amen. And one of the one I'm going to be talking about. Why the local church? Why does, do prophets have to be in a local church? One of the things I'm going to put out there is for character building. Character building. I'm going to explain that more to you as we go. But I'll be sharing more with you. You can go to prophetly at yahoo.com. You can go to my Facebook, Lee Williams. Amen. And you can go to mercifulministries.org. Uh, and you'll have that information for you. You'll, be, you'll hear more about this as we go. Amen. Leading up to September and October. Amen. God bless you. And I love you. And I look forward to seeing you again, talking to you again, amen, and speaking the word of God. Remember this. It's your time to rise and shine, for your light has truly come. Rise up. Rise up, men of God. Rise up, women of God.
You prophets of God, rise up. It's your time. It's your season. Say it to the Lord. You can email me at prophetlee at yahoo.com. Prophetlee at yahoo.com. I look forward to hearing from you. God bless you.